next week. So it's not like they have anything to look forward to. So they need to buckle down and just focus all of their energy into fixing these mistakes that they're doing right now. On the other side, we have Flipside coming off Nuke. The last two games they played on Nuke, they won them against Vegas Squadron and against Heroic in the Las Vegas qualifier. So they're looking pretty, pretty good on Nuke, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. And we will see in a moment here if that is going to carry over into this next match now to where they essentially could just tear apart LDLC. And for LDLC, I mean, uh, we'll talk about the T-sides again. It's, it's going to be Nuke here, and this is often yeah, one of the yeah. most grueling ones, even in the newer version to the T-sides do tend to be very, very rough on teams if they're not prepared for it. So what exactly does LDLC bring that they could uh, they could try to crush them with? That's that's the biggest worry here. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking towards uh, some quicker inside plays uh, and utilizing the fact that you can, of course, flash through the roof. Uh, I like the, the combination of those two things. And then with the Wall of Smokes outside to go and split B uh, also through the ramp. I think those are the, some of the very common strategies that you can use here in Nuke to, to try to break these teams that are holding in a very passive way on the CT side that I think that Flipside side might be actually favoring towards, holding a more passive, more defensive uh, way on the CT side, but we are not quite sure uh, who starts on, on each side. We're going to find out in a, in a second for you guys, and then we're going to be able to jump into the game. But yeah, this is definitely going to be a very important one. Flip side, one map away. The biggest problem for LDLOC looking at their T sides again and just the play style that they've usually brought to it is, is the fact that they usually actually tend to get quite a few advantages is looking at that first map against Flipside uh, by taking the more passive style in the way that they've been doing it. Um, and, and that's not really something that you're going to be able to do on a map like Nuke, where it's the T's that really do need to move out and take the initiative to take map control. That's such a huge part of having a successful T side on Nuke, either essentially just getting either ramp control or being able to push your way into outside. If you can't get one of these two, two areas, uh, anywhere else you try to push which is basically going to be dependent on just getting really lucky with your entry frags and or, or just having a player you know show up massively yeah, yeah. which does play in luck in certain factors yeah. uh, with the, with the caliber of play you need to pull off to clear out that site with a single player but still um, with, with their inability to really to really play to that more passive style on nuke I think it is going to be a very very rough ride for them in that half. So here we are looking to go into the pistol round here between these two teams will flip side take it and bring that straight to the grand final. Will LDLC bring some order back to France and take us to a map number three? That is the question. And we can see here now, wow. Markalov hanging back. He's already picked off one against Miss Stu. He spotted two more, and at least this is good from LDLC. They're taking the right path about it, going for the fast outside control. One of them already working their way into the warehouse too, but Markalov is aware of this. He dives into that smoke to get out of the out of the way of these players from LDLC. They're basically just trying to bulldoze through the defenses here on outside, and it's working out still, though. LDLC's picked up that kill, but here's Markalov again chiming, and he picks up one. They still don't know where he's at, as he's found his third on the round so far. Waylander shuts down Alex on the inside area, and a low XMS, he snuck his way down the rep he doesn't have the bomb so what's he gonna do yeah all alone here in the ct territory he's gonna try and take the first duel against waylander but won't even win that and as that happens flip side takes round number one here on dean you what a play for markalov yeah, Markolov again, uh, I mean, I mentioned it there for a moment. He gets his first kill, right? And this is beautiful. Super long range, a single tap to shut it down. And then we didn't we didn't catch here on the replay, but he dives into that smoke that was tossed up by the T's, which actually allows yeah. him to hide it. They don't go for the check on it because of that. And then all of a sudden, with the guys from LDLC are just getting shot in the back and they can't figure out where it's coming from. So here we go. Tech 9 rush coming in maybe towards the ramp or a quick inner push. We're going to see what the terrorists prefer him. They have two smokes and two flashbangs, so they're probably going to line something up and then go for the quick push. Blade actually might play close to the smoke here because he has that UMP 45 so he's going to be able to check that smoke and make sure that no T's run through that. For right now they're posted up in the lobby outside of this A bomb site and just waiting. If LDLC try to force their hand into the into the uh, the upper site there, this is going to be rough with the current yeah. positions that flip side are holding. They're ready. They're waiting for that, and they're even expecting it to a certain degree too. Oh, they're going to flash with the roof. That's nice. The first nade that goes in does some pretty decent damage as well. 84, 69, and 75 HP on three of the guys from LDLC that do get hit by that. And as you mentioned previously, they aren't getting prepared to toss these in, give them a little bit more room to sneak in. And it actually works out great. Electronic is blind. He can't even see where he's going currently. Alex, he'll pick up that kill as well. Misty finding another one against Blade, and then Alex finds his. Second so far against World did it. We're right down to just two on flip side. The good setup was there, but the flash of the roof absolutely crippled the guys on flip side. Yeah, definitely. That's the power of that strategy is that you can flash, and if they hold aggressive positions or positions in the middle of, of, of the bomb site, then they're going to get completely flashed. And the second flash that comes in is key because you don't just flash one time, you flash two times, and then the tech knights can just come in and wreck you. And Mr. Tech's out one, but it's all on Markalov now. 1v2, but the bomb hasn't gone down yet. So this is winning him a lot of time, and that's very important because it doesn't have a kit. 
has a smoke and a flashbang, however, to work with, though, to get back into the site. The big thing is going to be finding Mistu in that right corner. That's probably the biggest pressure situation he's up against. Now, his teammate was killed by an opponent from that spot, so he should expect something there. However, he may also be thinking that he may have moved from there, just to create a little bit more monotony about it. However, he moves in, he tries to line it up, but Mistu is able to dodge the shots, and he shuts things down with his Tech-9 to pick up the trade for LDLC and take us to one-to-one. -one. Really nice play coming out of LDLC. That, that's a perfect strategy. As I mentioned, I was looking for them to do some quick plays inside, using that smoke, using up double flashbang through the roof and then the speed of the tech nine just works out perfectly with that whole strategy they can get towards the bomb site they can actually even cut off the guy who's rotating into upper and he gets shut down and then it's pretty much easy pickings because then it's a 4v2 or 3v2 or something like that and they have the position they can just hold the ankles well, regardless here, LDLC now, we're going to just bulldoze their way once again into the A-bomb site. Blade leaping down from up on top, tries to impact on his own regard, but it's not playing out. LDLC are cleaning up house here. Waylander, though, finds that kill almost seemingly out of nowhere. He'll shut down Alex, so this is brought into a two-on-three, and Waylander also just picking up the SMG2, getting them a little bit more firepower. Markelov, though, he can't do anything to get his way back in through the garage currently. It's all on Waylander to clear it out for him, and he's found yet another kill with the SMG. He knows he has another guy sitting behind the generator there on the back of the site. Markelov took the long way, though, and he's heading up towards heaven, but a good read comes out from LDLC. They molly it off their Venom from pushing back in. Waylander tries to push. He lights up XMS, brings him down to 10 HP, but that molly is pretty much going to kill Markelov's hopes of getting back into the site. He'll go for it. That's a deep nade, though. It actually completely misses. I think it hits above, and the wall kind of blocks the damage, so unfortunate for those guys, but still, it's enough to push Markov outside of the site, and without a kit, he has no hope yeah. of defusing this in time. So it is going to be a second one for LDLC, and the remaining T's just trying to hunt him down now, which they'll do successfully. So in Markov's situation right there, he's 1v2. He knows one of them is decently low, but he can't afford to jump into the bomb site unless he gets a frag from that position, because he has to turn it into two individual 1v1s. And that's just not possible if, if they're just playing away from the bomb. He has to defuse the bomb and kill them. That's just not possible unless he gets a first frag. When he finds out, okay, I can't get the first frag, he has the time running away, he's just basically going to go off and save his weapon. And that's the only logical choice there. Uh, so very nicely played by LDLC, not giving him the chance of clutching the round. That's also very important playing tough clutch situations like that when you're on the defensive side. Well, now we do have the guys from Flipside here on a full eco for this round. They try to still play it aggressively, and Wayland has been the point man when it comes to these aggressive plays. This time, though, he won't be met with much success. Electronic working with the teammate here outside of the main doorway leading into the A site that they do find a kill onto Alex, bringing us down to a 4v4. Rolled at it with one more to chime into, but Tanu is playing for outside here. It's a little bit dangerous, but he holds on. He does have to switch over to the Glock, but still great damage in the Markalov. He'll take him down, and Mistu manages the rest over from heaven. So here we go, 3 to 1 is the scoreline as we move into the first buy round of this game. Let's see what Flipside has in store for us because I'm very, very curious of how they're going to play the CT side here on Dnuke because there's so many ways to play it as a CT. You can play it incredibly aggressively, you can play it very passively, you can play somewhere in, in between these two things. And they do have the AWP on World Edit with some utility as well, so economy is looking quite fine for them. One from us on Blade, that doesn't really matter because he's not the one who's supposed to be making the CT plays. And let's see here, okay, so... One man ramp, not the AWP though, and then they're playing the AWP outside, I think. But in a very positive, oh, very defensive position here. Two guys outside, one at red and one defensively. Well, they will start to move their way in. Blade waits for it. He does spray it as massive damage, but he only gets one kill. Alex, though, he will be finished off by Electronic, but then Mistu is there again to find the trade, and they're even watching out for the flank on Waylander since he's already done it so many times. It's become quite predictable, and with that, they're going to shut it down. Markalov still alive over here in the warehouse and whirled at it outside of heaven. But unfortunately, from these positions and with the utility they have, this is another round where LDLC are certainly set up for success. Yeah, definitely. Tano even still with the MP7, so uh, <laughs> that's a bit interesting. Still keeping that, of course, just getting the economy going. Uh, if you want to go do, do fast plays, it's actually really nice to stay on that SMG because you can just rush in and if you're lucky, you'll get something done. And, and if not, then it's not like you're throwing away a big wave of your economy. So. Right now looking quite good for LDLC, and, and we are, we talked about what they needed to do to bring this game back. A 4-1 to one lead on the T side definitely helps. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, they've been doing really good. Uh, they've actually, they haven't, really haven't had to strive too much for the outside map control, which I mentioned previously as being a very crucial part of this. They've, they've actually had quite a bit of success with just uh, directly pushing for the, for the inner control, and they've been doing a really good job of actually clearing out the guys from flip side who have... Uh, well, well, they have like good setups and good positioning actually to stop these rush plays. Unfortunately, when it actually comes time to fry, we really have not seen them uh, being met with too much success, mainly due to good utility usage from LDLC, which is another key thing uh, that's been working out so far about these these T side upper hits. See here, Blade with a P250 did good work on it. With it on cash, 
welded it on the AWP and Markelov on his weapon from the last round as well. Waylander with the Deagle. Once again going for, well, let's see if he goes, he's going to go for the for the flank plays, the aggressive plays on the ramp. But as you said last round, they've read it so far. They know that it's coming if he's going to decide on doing it. But this is a ramp push. Let's see if he can hold it. No. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Mistu is going to get a nice headshot there, as will Alex onto World. And again, these defenders are getting knocked out so quickly. And the hits from LDLC are so fast that Flipside aren't even really given time to react to it. Blade chimes in there with one kill, as does Markaloff from outside there. But Blade taking a little bit more damage over there from the HD grenade. However, now we got Electronic diving in. And also some good intel there, too, going on to XMS, as they've just found his position. So he's going to hold out here for a moment and see if any of the CTs try to move in. Mistu finds Electronic, but Blade trading it out again. Now XMS knows he's got that player over there in control, but he's still looking for the second one. But with 50 seconds on the clock, he can play this essentially as slowly as he wants to, and he's being sneaky, creeping away over to the other side. As he realizes that Waylander's sitting just below those steps, he's not even going to check it. And with that, Markaloff is going to shut things down. Markaloff, excuse me, not Waylander. He'll take down XMS, and he'll pick up finally another round for Flipside. That was a pistol round with, of course, two weapons coming in from the first one, but three pistols on the CT side, and they still managed to swing that around. So, in my opinion, that was... Uh... LDLC probably whiffing that one a bit because they should be able to shut down Blade. But look at that shot. That is the, disgusting. An action that's, movie shot right there, That's why man. they can't shut him down, man. He's just delivering stuff like that with the P250. But right now, we do have a full buy round for both teams. 4 to 2 is the scoreline. LDLC looking quite good, but they need to take a bit more in order to impress us. Oh. And now we can see again. Oh. Vent bit. dive. <laughs> a little bit of vent dive coming out there from existence. And he's going to transition this over here to the other way, too as he moves into the B site very, very quick about this. Now, the core real question is going to be if Flipside actually got the read into him going down here. They're not looking out for it at all, so he's just going to walk right over here into the vent room, and he finds Waylander hopping around. That must be so frustrating uh, for yeah, Wayland to just go down and check, and, oh, there's nothing there, there's nothing on ramp, but then he just gets shot in the back. Just, what happened? Why aren't you holding... Holding the vent? Oh, okay, he's dead. Um, well, they're coming in towards the ramp, but Alex is holding the, the ankle. It's just, oh, it's so, so frustrating for the flip side players because technically they're not making mistakes individually, but it's just the positions that the terrorists have are just so good. So the super sneaky play from existence here completely outclasses flip side positionally. This is really smart from them. Yeah. And all of a sudden, again, it's another round where it's just one guy left alive and he's not going to last very long either. Mistu gets the one tap against Electronic to end it. So beautiful stuff from existence. And Alex also helping out too by getting that aggressive position in the ramp room. Three to five of those kills, I think, happened without any response at all coming in from the opposing player. And once again, that this is what we see from existence. He's making the plays himself. And that's not usually the in-game leader style. Uh, you sit back, you relax, you let your entry fraggers, you let your main stars do the do the work. But Existence is one of these players that can do it himself. And he's proving it again and again and again. And this round was no different. So now we see LDLC going for the outside play once more. Something that, again, again and another, another key thing too about the CC, they've been keeping it quite varied, but already pushing themselves. They don't use smoke for coverage though, so that's going to be a bit dangerous. Markaloff is able to find one, but Existence is there for the trade. They do know, however, their presence is pretty wide outside here, so they do have to be cautious of a push really into either site from this point forward. Electronic, he's gone for the vent dive downstairs oh. to watch out for a secret play. The Mollies are preventing that for right now. However, they've already faded, so they can watch out for it. There is a nice shot from XMS, though, but World Edit is there again to trade it. He takes him right back down, and we're into a three on three once more. World Edit should just not buy anything else in P250s for the rest of this game because he's just been so on point hitting headshots left, right, and center with that gun. Right now, it's a 3v3. Definitely an advantage for LDLC since they have the weapons and a lot of utilities still remaining, but it's still doable. Like Electronic with a FAMAS and some armor as well. And World Edit, we always see what he can do with the P250. And there's, right now, they know kind of where the terrorists are. They have them boxed out, and with World Edit being so close, they can hear if they're going to go for anything. Electronic goes down, and there, there goes the hopes for Aaron, really, because he was the one with the FAMAS and the main the main hope for that team. This round is still super tense, though, because of the bomb position outside there. They don't feel secure enough to push into it. They are watching out for this flank. <gasps> Blade, but he's sneaking in. They're not paying attention to it right now. He caught one of them and reloaded. No! So smart from Blade. He goes for the player with the active weapon and leaves the player reloading as the second target. Nicely done. Now it's just Mistu alive in the 1v2. He's trying to hold this off. Keep in mind the timer, too. He's only got 20 seconds. He should, in theory, they'll be able to grab this bomb and rush into A's. It's clear, but Whoa. no! World that it goes back around the box just at perfect timing, and Flipside are going to clutch it out. What a round from Blade. Absolute beast play coming in from him with the P250. That was a 3k against a fully bought up LDLC team. Look at that in the end. The decision making. Take out the first guy, and the second guy just gets banged straight on the head. Perfect play from Blade. What a play.
And with Blade being the hero once again, Flipsider right back into the game now. Three to five. Big investment coming in from them, but keep in mind, LDLC still have plenty of cash to work with too. They've won, and Alex has had to go down to a Tech 9 buy, but they still have the op on Tanu and three other AKs beyond that. A lot of them lining up, however, in the T lobby way, and Tanu already peeking out here to try and see if he can catch anybody looking towards that main doorway. So it may be another fast play towards the upper site from LDLC, and we've seen already how successful these can be. And this is really nice, just exploding the door to get that AWP, AWP peek open. If you don't get anything from that, it's still very good for that quick push getting into the A bomb site. Uh, if you want to go for something A play based, you should always go for the explosion that thought early on. It's something that in 1.6 happened all the time. In Source, not so much as the way that the game worked. But yeah. So Blade holding himself in the corner here now, waiting for this. As the rest of LDLC actually do back away from it a little bit, working their way on the outside here, but this has actually bought time for Waylander to just walk right into, ooh, XMS saves his teammate's life as Waylander was about to move in and find that kill. And now they've actually got an open path over towards the ramp room too, so they're gonna push towards it and World Edit as he keeps himself in this corner. Tuanu destroys World Edit. LDLC now paving a path. Mistu did get hit down to two HP, but he's able to safely back away upstairs. Yeah, so now they know there's nothing going to be, nothing in lobby, nothing upstairs, so it's probably going to be a B push. And, well, the terrorists are sadly enough already on that bomb side. They do have Chuanu with the AWP on the ramp, Blade coming in from the back stairs, and Chuanu just holding, making sure that everything is guarded. And Electronic finds existence here. So it brings us down to another even battle. And we saw how crazy the last round was. Tanu trying to hold. He actually misses the shot, but no follow-up for Markov. He doesn't choose to challenge it yet. However, still is able to sneak in there. Only loses about half of his HP and with Electronic shutting down XMS. It's all going to come down to Miss Dew. They're already defusing the bombs. So he's got to kind of rush up, but there's nobody paying attention to it. So he's going to stop the defuse. Takes out that player, and he can just hide in the corner now. A second one is sneaking up through the smoke. He should have been able to hear that tap. He goes in spraying, though. He still has about half the clip left, so plenty of ammo to use, but the flashbang going in. That doesn't hit him, though, and now a second player moves in, but Markaloff able to dodge the bullets. And with that flip side, it'll be a little bit close on the defuse, but they're just going to get it, and they will pick up another round. And confusion in the camp of Flipside, they were not quite sure that, that well, they didn't know that he was in that angle, and when their diffuser dies early off, it, it's, a, it's a clear sign of some con communication error on that team. But nonetheless, it's going to be a round for Flipside, really nice in the end, but I have to say, Twani, you have to hit that, those shots on the ramp. He was 1v1 with the guy on the ramp, he even heard him step down, so you know he's there, you just have to win that duel with the AWP if you want to play and win tournaments on this level. Really got to win those. Yeah, definitely. Basically. Really got to win those. <laughs> The meme points. So LDLC, oh, here's that vent dive again from existence. And I don't even think they saw it. Obviously, they're going to notice that the vent itself broke, but still. Alex with the deagles. The rest of them are going to flush right in. Existence, though, moves in right into the barrel of play, and he's spraying every which way. They did trade out two more kills, so this ends up going into a 2v1, but they managed to dispatch a Tanu. He was already pretty low there. Okay, so it seems like communication is uh, finally flowing again. Uh, not Blade not completely satisfied with how it's going so far, but then again, like, they have been behind for a long time, but now they're starting to come back and they need to just continue doing this push and getting these rounds. Now it's 5-5. Five to five. It's not a perfect CT side by any means or any shape or form, but still, if they get the rest of the reigning five, win the pistol, then it's all good for flip side. LDLC, though, have to string some rounds together, and now they have a buy round, and this is a big chance to do something. Alex shuts down Waylander as he tries to get aggressive. World that it will have to try to make up for it, but there's going to be no hope with those Molotovs in the way. LDLC, very, very fast control coming down to the B-bomb site. Blade looking to try and resist this and prevent them from essentially getting a fast play, but again, he gets boxed out by Utility once more. However, it decides to push through it anyway as he continues to lose teammates. Existence taking out World at it, and now Tanu has just found Blade. So we're already down to two. And they're both upstairs, unfortunately. I really like these quick plays from LDLC. Just going somewhere, using the utility and using your game knowledge to get into a point where you can just force the CTs into predictable positions. Uh, apart from that one push uh, through the smoke with the flashbang from the player on the bottom B bomb site, then every single position that is held by the flip side guys were quite predictable. And that's why LDLC could come in and take these kills. Now they force Markov and Electronic to save and secure yet another round with five AK surviving. And that's really important because, as you can see on the scoreboard, the money is incredibly low on that T side. So if they survive with all five AKs, they can start to build an economy into these next couple of rounds and maybe even maybe get a couple of more under their belt and also get some AWP action going. And there's no cash sitting behind the remaining members of Flipside too. Nope. So even with these two saves, I highly doubt there's going to be that much of an investment coming in from the other three on the rebuy. This is rough now for Flipside. They're letting LDSC take the advantage on T side here. 
side, which on pretty much every other map they've played so far in this event, they've been pretty lackluster yeah. on, and now all of a sudden they have the edge. And this is the map choice of Flipstar. That's what, what, what's so strange. Like, this is not the map uh, that, that they usually play. This is actually, um, well, Nuke is one of these 50-50 maps for, for Flipstar, which they play, but they must have been banking on LDLC not being so prepared on that T-side. But nonetheless, they were, and that's a big mistake. Nuke is actually one of the, the normal bans from LDLC. The electronic here actually has a good angle. He's able to take down Alex, and the second player is pushing into the mini shed now. That's where Blade's gonna pick up a kill. World at it with another one. This hit's getting shut down very, very quickly. XMX and Mister are trying to turn it around, but they're so, so low. XMS, he gets one more kill, but then Markolov rolls in with the Kobe for the final one. It will actually be flip side, taking control of this round, and once again bringing us very close to a tie game. And this is another example of how you can technically do a quick round, which essentially the idea is good, but the execution is flawed. Uh, I really like the way that they utilize the smokes and the flashbangs in the in the first round. That they won where they went inside, where Existence double flashed on the top of the roof, and they actually used the smokes. This time around, they used some different form of flashbangs and some different form of entry smokes and stuff like that, but it basically didn't really do that much, and it just doesn't work out. The quick play alone is not enough. So that's what they know now. They know that they have to set up and execute. They have to use the flashbangs, use the smokes to smoke out the CTs, even molly out the positions in order to get into this inner bomb site. And with this knowledge behind them, I'm pretty sure that they're going to utilize this and probably even go more inside when they get this one down. We can see LDLC again going for the much slower style of play, but even with this now, we have a light amount of outside pressure coming in, and Flipside are actually holding really good positions to stop this from having much yeah. success. Tanu looks for the player that's usually sitting in that right corner there with the op, but he's not going to find him. But wrapped around the corner, now the interplay comes in, and when it's a two for one, now two for two, XMS again showing up, and Tanu, the shot right into the face of World, that he'll take him down, and that should clear out the site. Not only this, but XMS is still going. He's picked up his third frag now against Markolov. We'll see what Waylander can do, but he's smoked off and I think he's got double smoke too. The good old double smoke. <laughs> yeah. Extra security added in there. Yeah. Second smoke doesn't seem to be too effective now, but there you go. Tawny is going to shut it down anyway. And LDLC showing up. We asked the question of whether they were going to bring some strats to the table here for this T-side, and right now it seems to be working. Just brute aggression, but it's working yeah. as they take the lead yet again. I'm not really going to call it like <laughs> good strategical play that's winning them the round right now. This round it was XMS coming into that bomb side and getting two entries. Really nice work. But I'm sure that LDLC now, they know that this aggression is working. That's why they're trying it so hard. If they get shut down in a couple of rounds, now and find out okay now they know exactly what we're doing they're going to shut it down then they're going to try some more intricate stuff right now it's a full eco for flip side so another good push after waiting off the initial aggression from the potential cts then they're probably going to go for a quick inside push again with twanu going outside so we wait and see exactly how the dlc are going to try to play this out still keeping most of their players in the t lobby way and twanu however pushing aggressively out Ooh, he's almost caught in a weapon switch but it does look like his opponent there decides to back away at the last moment. That was nice. <laughs> we can see World Edit moving his way upstairs again to prepare for the defense on the A side should they try to just take full control of the upper site. But it's not looking like we have any full commitment from LDLC. And eventually, I do still believe that this is going to lead into an A hit, but they need to make sure that they can pretty much isolate all the other avenues yeah. and make this a clean take once they actually start to move in. Yeah, existence at the moment pretty much got full outside control there along with his teammate. Yeah, that's really good. Just taking that map control slowly, but surely. Mister just racking up one, two, three frags off camera, but it will be the round surely now with that play from Mister XMS ending it off. And that was really nicely done. LDLC, this time around, they don't push inside. They know they're up against an eco, so they just play for map control and, and trying to take 1v1 duels, which they know nine out of 10 times with a fully bought up terrorist against the USP on that CT. You're probably going to win that. And actually, it's because they decide to rush in towards Mister Zame, as we see here on the replay. Really nice to have these replays, and Mister just cleans them up. There's no way he's gonna lose that. Flip side, buying into this one again, but the buy is not that great. In fact, Blade gonna do something a little bit more interesting here, picking up the shotgun now. It looks like he's gonna be playing it, I believe, just towards the upper site, so waiting for the eventual hit to roll in. We'll see if he's able to meet any effectiveness with it. If LDLC, I mean, if LDLC go for another one of these like fast plays in through here, then I, this shotgun can actually do really good work, but yeah. that's gambling on it. And LDLC have kept it very, fairly varied on their T side so far. See here, Blade is playing close range with the Max 7, which is the perfect position to do so in. And he's actually deciding to stand in this corner that is usually just pre-fired when you have a smoke like this. And he does take damage down to 40. Twanu taking off Markolov. Um, he was probably playing from that secret area. So it's going to be really hard. One man down already and Blade on 40 HP to hold this one when the push eventually comes. So it's probably going to be something like 9 to 6 in the first half of LDLC, which is a big improvement from the last time around. Electronic still sitting here very patiently waiting 
for the hit to come in from LDLC. But look at again this, this outside, con outside control, which yeah. is, is basically being given to them here now. They're going to basically surround the site and then be able to fairly easily swarm it from almost every single angle. Yeah, it's kind of like playing cash. Like, if you give up mid control, then you're probably going to get swarmed from every angle, and the terrorists can decide if they want to swing A or B. And it's their decision, not you forcing their hand. It's the same thing on Nuke. If you give them outside control, they can go easily through Seeker and go B, or they can drop down on you from, from, up, uh, from up top here. As XMS is about to do this, one CT here. World Edit has heard it, so he's holding that angle, but XMS is not edging in. He's smart, and there we go. He's gonna see it. Oh. Okay, that was a bit touchy. Regardless, though, three fast kills with the flip side roster. Now a fourth. All that's left is Tawny trying to work this 1v3 here. And we can see he's basically just stuck trying to rush his way in through the garage. He somehow makes that cross, but he's only got seven seconds left. And there you go. Finally, Electronic will put an end to it. And Flipside will rack up a seventh round to close out the half. Certainly not what they were expecting, but not necessarily the end of the world yet. Yeah, really nice individual plays coming out of the players um, on, on flip side in the last round because I actually thought that LDLC had the advantage there. Um, but Blade, World Edit, and Electronic in unison just holding down this bomb side. And Electronic, once again, he is one of the standout players, also the newest player here on the flip side lineup, and he gets the final frag on Tuanu. And that's going to be the first half coming in, but definitely a, a big improvement in general of the T side for LDLC. Eight rounds there. If we were, if this was 2014, the match would be over because Nuke was so CT sided back then. But now it's the new version, so technically this is going to very well likely still happen for Flipside. But we'll have to see what the pistol brings us, and then we'll try and make our predictions from that. Yeah, absolutely. But still, a, a big improvement from LDLC. Uh, I mean, like I said, and I think like you mentioned a couple rounds ago too, in terms of like strats, it wasn't anything super crazy, but oh. they, they found something that was working for them, and that was just the, the pure outright aggression, especially towards that upper site. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, Flipside just was never prepared for, and they kept getting run over. Yeah, and then the, in some of the rounds, they actually shut it down. So it's basically all up to individual performances and who hits the shot on that day. And that's, of course, great if you're hitting your shots, but you can't just be consistent on that. And that's the problem. That's why we have this 7 to 8 halftime score. But now we are moving into the second half of the second map. It's a smoke and a flashbang on Blade, armor on the rest of the guys. So this is something aggressive coming in, surely. Played with the fast smoke out through the doorway there. A little bit of risk and just popping the door open like that, but he gets to it really, really quickly. Oh, so it's actually fake vent dive? Too misplaced. And yeah, we do see that rolling in now. And that's actually going to work too because it pulls existence away from the position he was previously playing. Electronic, he's going to find Miss 2. Existence lighting up the shots there, but he cannot find anyone. Electronic, look at him just battling towards hell right now. XMS will finally take him down, but there's only two remaining CTs left, and he's one of the lowest ones. XMS goes down to world at it. We'll see what Tanu can do here. But they've boxed him out entirely. He's going to sneak through, and there you go. There's the headshot oh, wow. from Blade to give Flipside control of the match yet again. 8-8 eight to eight as the game will be tied for the third time. This was a perfect example of why I love seeing Flipside tactics and Blade play these pistol rounds, because they actually just mind like gaming their opponents. So they're throwing down the smoke, throwing down the Ooh, flashbang, as we see do that. see the frags here. But that's opening up the rotation onto the ramp. So right now, the CTs are thinking smoke, flashbang, and, and shots going through the vent. They're going to go vent dive, and the rotate instantly, the, the one from ramp, to straight down under, and then they push ramp, and he's watching the under bomb side. And that way, they get the ramp control really quickly, force the CT on the wrong foot, and then take the duel straight after that. And it's just beautiful pistol round play coming out from flip side. Well, now we do see the guys from flip side just rushing their way in. The secret here, too. They're going to move their way in and basically just take full control of the B side. There's not any resistance that's pulled in yet from LDLC. They, I don't think they have any players down here. Yeah, they're just starting to adjust now. Alex will push his way in, but they've noticed it's very late. Alex just walks into his own death. That's World that are going to take him down. I'm sure they're going to switch the bomb, and yeah, that's going on to the ground now. Nice position for World Up, but unfortunately, he does meet his match against Mistu there. Waylander, however, is taking down XMS. They're still causing a bit of havoc upstairs. So three of these CTs remaining, but with, with no positions in them, adjusting to this so, so late, it's looking like now that it probably is going to be another easy round for the guys on the flip side to take the lead. But Existence doing what he can over there from the ramp room to cause as much damage as possible to keep the money low. Yeah, definitely. They don't really want to hunt him right now. Um, they have two UMP45s and an AK-47 and extra utility, which they can bring into the next round and, and keep make sure that that economy, economy keeps on rolling for them. So they're probably just going to go outside and rotate the other way away because they know where Existence is probably holding. Actually, they're going to go and hunt him. This is a strange decision, but the, uh, well, the self-confidence is high in the flip side camp as uh, Electronic coughs his lung out. Hopefully there's nothing <laughs> wrong with him because he has been looking like one of the major players for Flipside th so far through this tournament. Brain slug. <laughs> That's probably the case. Yeah. It's a green logo as well, so <laughs> you can imagine the little green brain slug just coming in. Well, anyway, Flipside now go on to their Felica around here. Just P250s, nothing super interesting going to be happening. They might stack one of the sites, but even so here. Let's see, pistols and nothing else for LDLC.
So the chances of them winning this round is probably around 5%. So it's going to be interesting <laughs> to see what they're going to do. And already flip side again, just walking into the B yeah. site. There's like, it's not even like they really notice it here. So they're just stacking up side, like the A bomb side, because they have the pistols. There's really nothing they can do. So they're trying their best, trying to gamble, and they have gambled poorly. Yeah, so it doesn't work out for them. And because of how easily they got into the B site, they, in the last round, they just do it again here. And as the rotates come in very, very late, as I mentioned previously, it's just going to get shut down. One, two, three kills already. Tony and Alex are the last two alive. May post up in the exit spots, but. No, actually, one of them's still down here, too, and Blade, he's made quick work of him. I have to tear through the door, but he does kill him, and Tawny's so close to killing Waylander, but no luck for anybody on the French roster. So, fairly one-sided round we see there, of course, that's like two P250s and three USPs. That's, well, you have basically no chance of winning in that round. But with that almost full eco coming in, they will have a buy. Um, some of these players are lacking a bit of utility, but it's not too bad. So LDLC would have to get something done in this round, definitely. Because flip side, on the T side now, we know they play a very good T side. And on Nuke, if you can play a strong T side, if you do have a lot of strats, you can easily rack up rounds because this is the new Nuke. This is not the old CT bias Nuke. So if you play a good T side, then there's definitely lots to do. Alex with the early drop down too to watch out in case flip side wanted to go again with that early aggression down through the vents and down through Secret. Now again, they've already gotten Secret here. Electronic has pushed his way through it. There's been very minimal outside resistance at all coming in from LDLC. But thankfully, Alex is here, and I think they realize at the very least they've pushed through it earlier on this time. Tonu and World did it. Meanwhile, upstairs are trading kills, and Alex with a good position. He is going to find Electronics. So that secret play does not really pan out. They've had better luck, however, playing towards the upper site, but XMS is still making trouble for them there, too. Waylander slowly trying to clear things out. They've gotten the site, but they're in a 2v3. And the Molotov, though, that'll do great, Borg, actually, because that should box out the player moving his way up. This position, though. Waylander. He's going to be looking for the player towards heaven, but he's very exposed. So he also has to be careful of a garage push, too. As on the wall top's gone, and oh, Waylander finds Alex pushing up the ladder. World that gets one of the last kills, and then Waylander moves in again to shut down Alex. Beautifully played from flip side, and they clutch out that 2v3. That was a really nice decision from Waylander, and the movement of getting out to that position so quickly without anyone really noticing. So he gets the shot down. He has the perfect angle if they want to go up the vents, and he holds that angle first, gets a kill here, as we see, beautiful shot. And then he knows the second guy's probably going to come from up, and he even sees the flashbang, so you can know he's, you can just pre-fire the position where it's going to be, and it's probably going to line up as well. And it does, so Waylander grabs the double. I think it was the triple as well from World Edit, and then it's just 11 to 8, and LDLC forced onto another pistol round. Well, you'll see completely broken here, and we've already seen the fact that they've just tried to take these like gamble stacks. But this one looks like a little bit—it's a little bit more diverse in the way that they're spreading their players across the map. But still, they need to do a lot better job of resisting the outside control. We talked about how important it was before, and it's been very crucial to allow Flipside to just walk all over the map and kind of destroy Flipside so far on the T side. There's Markov already finding the one kill. Existence trying to play behind this air conditioner, which actually tends to be really annoying. But I think they changed it recently to make it less so. Waylander though is going to find Tuanu and Existence. Unfortunately, just has to duck behind it. Miss do. Still playing out from hell, but again, there's that control that I talked about before from Flipside. These last two have to try and just hold out here, and now Existence, well, not, not a lot of hope, unfortunately. I think it's the right choice what they did. Um, they just didn't, didn't have the weapon, weaponry to back it up, to be honest. Uh, it is, wow, it, <laughs> it wrecked. <laughs> it's, existence just uh, gets uh, justice from above. Um, but but yeah, I think it's the right decision. They play one guy in uh, in, in secret, one guy towards uh, the main garage, and then one guy behind um, that uh, uh, ventilator box there on top of upper. So that's actually really nice, keeping that outside control, making sure the terrorists can't get it. But when they only have pistols and they're trying to take long range duels, duels against AKs, that's just yeah, that's just weird with the weaponry they have for that round. So with flip side now going into another full bot round here, as is LDLC of course. We'll have to see if they can meet any resistance at all with this CT side. Mark Love just clearing out the panes of the window there early on so as not to alert them if they do try to flash that a little bit later. Also to allow him to go for the smoke setup as we have two of them getting ready to deploy inside now. The rest of the team is waiting, I believe, in the lobby. So this is certainly going to turn itself into one of those direct A hits. And the resistance from LDLC, it's quite light. We do have XMS sitting up on top here. But if his teammate's not able to hold the push from behind him, then that could be a very quick death for him after he picks up one or two kills from this doorway. Alex, though, positioned here. No presence in heaven, but they do have more players watching out in the ramp room, too, that can try to wrap around these guys and open up an early flank if needed. 
Wayland coming in from A main, and there's the flashbangs coming through the roof, and Wayland is just wreaking havoc. Electronic will take the frag, but now it's a 5v3. It's going to be a post plan scenario. The old double smoke in the main garage is going to secure everything there. Markolov is holding lobby. There's no way that the CTs can come in and retake this bomb site. They're going to save straight up, and that's going to be 13 to 8. And as I talked about on the T side for LDLC, the round that I really liked from them was the big coordinated execute towards the A bomb site. Markolov this time around was on the rafters on, on the outside side and flashed through the roof. They have smokes coming in and then they have Waylander with a flank coming in through the main garage and getting that opening frag, opening the whole bomb site up for his teammates. So it was just a perfectly coordinated A execute from Flipside and that's exactly what you need to win a T side and D nuke. And so far they're looking like they're doing it. It's going to be 13 to 8. Twanu might even not save this AWP. He'll be able to pick up one more kill against Waylander, but then world that it trades it. So down goes the op, but that's the most important gun yeah. too, as their money is once again going to be brought down to scraps. But I mean, Waylander just continues to make a mockery of these CT setups here. The way he just pushes into garage, kills probably one of the more dangerous players that was sitting up on top of uh, on top of the uh, the mini shed there, and then turns it right around. Obviously, his teammate kind of takes the kill from him, but he essentially could have gotten it himself. Uh, he gets the kill onto that guy hiding behind the other vent. It's that was the only setup they had, and then uh, once again they just walk right out into the site after they pick up a couple kills, and the remaining CTs just. Can't not do anything about it. It's literally impossible. Yeah, and now we have the tactical timeout coming in from LDLC. And this time around, there's no thinking time really for um, for existency. He knows what's wrong. And uh, now they're going to try and get some communication going. How can we solve these problems before it's too late? Because we actually, they actually had a decent start to this map, comparing them to DE Cash. So I think this is actually so far in this best of three where they have the best chance of doing something. And this tactical timeout comes in the perfect time to just say, okay, this is probably one of our last chances, the buy that we're going to get, the next buy, and then it's done if we don't win that. So let's just focus up, make sure we have everything on the line so we can say, okay, if we fail, it's not because we weren't prepared and weren't running the 100% strat that we wanted to. It is because we simply, like, were out of class, and that's... You can't be mad at that. You can't be mad at being out of class in a game, but if you aren't bringing your A game, then you can be mad, and that's what they're making sure that they're bringing everything to the table right now. As Existence said in his interview, I know it's going to be hard, but uh, there's a chance. And if there's a chance, I'll give every single thing that I have. And then I think that's a good mentality to have coming into the game. So far, this is a flawless T-sided half from Flipside 2, to mention that as well. The guys yeah. from LDLC have not been able to strike back at all yet, despite having the slight advantage going into it. As eight rounds have not yet increased, so they are still fighting to grab a footing on their CT side and work it from there to try and still win this map. Keep them in this tournament. And for them, the best hope, of course, taking it to Cobblestone and then winning it out from there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but let's see here. 13 to 8 is the scoreline right now as the tactical timeout is slowly running out. The money on the T side, as you can see there, if you're in the stadium, is absolutely perfect. 11k on World Edit, 9k on Waylander, and uh, yeah, 9k as well on Markov. So they have plenty of money to go around. They technically have enough if they keep winning to just not care anymore about money. Uh, so that's not even a problem for them. And um, yeah, looking quite nice. Electronic, of course, topping the scoreboard, the main star player uh, who's been put into the clutch positions and into the big situations. And now we're back into the game. It's a scrappy buy, but it's a buy nonetheless for all DLC. And they basically have to do it here now too, but already there's Waylander again, man. I talked about how he just, he just wow. starts destroying these guys right from the beginning of the round, and he does it yet again. Existence goes out. And we've already got a one-man advantage working for Flipside here as Alex also is going to hold here and try to see if he can find anything. He does have the aggressive spot that they may not be paying attention to, but he shoots the wrong way, and that gives him up. So World is going to take him down. We do see Twanu trading as the kind of comical corpse falls from up on top there. That's electronic that gets knocked out, but still, it'll be the 4v3, and with smokes deployed, Flipside can rush through here and take secret. Let's see him. Twanu trying his very best. And it's good enough. He's going to get one. He's not going to get the second, but does damage the blade, so it's a pretty good trade. It's a 2v3, so still doable. Actually, 2v2 as XMS wraps in from behind. Mistu is now holding the uh, lower passageway as XMS is in a very interesting position comparing to the fact that he's a CT. He's in the T silo right now. He's looking up on top here. Are any remainders that may still be out in the open? Unfortunately, there's none left. They've all safely retreated into the innards of either hell or down through secret leading up to B. As they basically just sit back and wait. Yeah. However, without the bomb control, I doubt LDLC are going to be doing anything too aggressive here. They know that they have it, 
And Wayland Leader is kind of on a mission. The worst part is, too, is now that they had that gone silo confirmed that there's nobody else hanging out outside, they know exactly where they're going to come in from. The flash goes in. Misty's able to easily dodge that. He does spray and Misty's opening shots. This That is going to give away where he's playing from. Waylander grabs that kill. He's got the chance to get the bomb back now, and he's just going to run in and grab it. He's also running away from XMS. Just works his way into A. He knows he's got this in a 1v1, but with only 10 seconds, he did not have enough time. And actually, no, he just has enough time to run this down to be through the vents and work himself underneath. This is still going to be risky, though, as XMS is hot on his tail, but he doesn't push out. He hides. Now he's going to go for it here. Has the angle lined up, but no! Waylander's going to come out with another big round of 3k here, including the last 1v1 clutch. Okay, so let's think about this. It's a 2v2. The CTs have the bomb down. They know that one of them is going to be coming from, from downstairs, surely, and then one going to be coming from upstairs. The guy watching, I think it's Misty, watching the lower stairs, he has three grenades, a smoke, a flashbang, and a nade, and doesn't use n neither one of them. And there's 20 seconds remaining. If he smokes that off and just pre-flashes and pre-nades, he saves five seconds. That wins the round. But he, he dies with three nades on his body, and that's just... Well, they, they brought that on themselves, to be honest, the LDLC, because that was a round, in my opinion, that they could have won and turned the tide. They're forcing up again on LDLC side simply because they don't have a choice now. They're up against the wall, and they need to just basically try to hope that they can pick up one or two rounds to just stop Flipside from getting up to match point. Still here. Existence um, just uh, setting up the smoke. Alex with the UMP-45, and uh, yeah, as you say, it's, it's going to be hard for them. UMP-45 on Alex as well, and Scrappy by no utility. Existence diving down towards hell there. Waiting to see if Flipside are going to push in to a position where he could try to abuse them a little bit, but he ends up just actually backing away, which is now going to get dangerous, as you have potentially two guys from Flipside that can walk right inside and punish him. But he's even given up the Heaven spot, too. He dives further into the site. So LDLC now handing over an area that they were actually really fond of taking control of back in the first half. Flipside are basically going to walk right out here and again get free outside control. So here we go. 40 seconds remaining in what could be the game winning round, basically, because if they win this, Flipside are going to be on 14 or 15. The money is looking terrible for LDLC, which means if they buy the next one, it's going to be at max umps with some utility or pistols with full utility or FAMASAs and M4s with nothing. But right now, they're turning the tide. Two frags coming in, not a third. Well, they're grabbing down Alex. And now Markov is going to try to push his way in, but he's being dinked from the other side over there. So XMS is going to grab that kill. All of a sudden, it's flip side with only two players remaining, but they get over to the bottom site and they are going to have time to be able to plant the bomb. Not only this, but the Molotov moving in. That's going to burn Toronto up. He goes down to an electronical find that frag. Now a 2v3. And everything gets quiet on the map as LDLC try to get in positions for a retake. Electronic hiding behind this box spot, though. And this is where he can really abuse these guys, especially if they go out from the catwalk there. He fails to check below. Now they know where he is. And he's been isolated. He's no longer paying attention up top. He checks his backside here, swings out and grabs that kill, but he's lost his teammate. Now he's alone, and he's not going to be able to hold it. Existence will shut it down, and LDLC stay alive. They'll be able to get their ninth round. Well, so, round number nine coming in from LDLC. Mr. Top in the scoreboard with 20 frags, so he's definitely doing some work for his team, and that's some of the things that the, the analyst desk said. They need to step up individually as well, LDLC, in order to take this. They need to play the absolute A game, and Mr.'s doing that right now, and it's good to see, but they still need to rack a bunch of rounds together to tie this one up, because this is round number 24, and they're behind with five rounds. Still, the, the investment comes in. The big issue right here is that now they need to be able to consistently buy and not have their buys reduced, like lacking yeah. utility and whatnot, as they do need this to be able to hold out Flipside, where otherwise, especially like over here towards the outside area, they've been really heavily abused in that, and that's what's allowed Flipside to walk onto these sites. So making sure that they can keep the buys going here, but if they drop this one, they're immediately going to be reset, and they won't have any money at all, and that's basically just going to be a walkover round to allow Flipside to take the set. Yeah, and Flipside have plenty of money. After buying, they have still one guy in 10k, one, point, one guy in 4.2k, so no worries they're going to be able to buy in the next one, even if they lose this one. So the money might be actually the, the last nail in the coffin for LDLC, unless they survive with three or more players. And uh, definitely the Auburn Twan is going to be important to bring into the next round. Well, Misty holding that close angle on ramp room, and Flipside basically uh, holding potential pushes towards every area of the map right now. You can see the three guys moving in. Waylander, for the first time in a while, actually does not have success with his outside push. Tuanu is going to take him down over there. They still have Electronic in the area, but I think he's managed to sneak his way downstairs too. So now we've got Tuanu. Actually, yeah, Tuanu's still holding in the secret area. It's uh, this player that's actually gone all the way over there towards CT currently as Electronic holds that spot. But unfortunately, he's not going to gain many advantages there. And with Alex just destroying these guys on the ramp push, it's looking good for LDLC all of a sudden. It's down to just Electronic, who, like we mentioned previously, had flanked his way over towards CT spawn, but it wasn't a really great advantage. And all he's managed to do is get his way into the ramp room where everybody on the LDLC waits down below. And that's the thing about a flank. A flank 
is has a lot of potential, kind of like potential energy, but you need to use that potential or uh, less it's, it's going to be useless. It's going to be completely useless because if he's 1v5, it doesn't matter if he has a great flank. That flank can only be utilized if he's using it around his team. And if his team is all dead, then, well, there's just no way. It's a nice little lesson in, like, Newtonian physics. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I actually have a yeah. Stephen Hawking book with me today, so <laughs> yeah. it's all good. Gotta learn that physics, man. I don't read books. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's an old form of media. <laughs> Millennials. <laughs> <laughs> So here we, we go. Be a YouTube video. <laughs> anyway, Tanu, he's going to open up with Electronic there, taking him down as more of them push their way through. They do have the smoke coverage again to get fast control of Secret, and they've been using this before. However, LDLC have started to adapt. They've gotten used to this more, and there's Alex now, jumping out from the vents. He's going to find Markalov, and again, this will limit the potential from Flipside to get down to his site. Let's see here. Looking really good from LDLC these last couple of rounds. I have to say, after a, a quite slow start on the CT start, I'm very impressed with how they're playing this. But Waylander, once again, tries to get this one back for his team. And I have to say, he's working so incredibly hard to bring this one back. Worlded well, also getting a frag now. It's the trio. Waylander, Worlded, and Blade against Existence, XMS, and Mistu. Who's going to take it out? One minute, minute remains. Oh, Waylander moving in there. He does manage to pick off one of the additional players. That's Existence gone down. XMS and Mistu, though, still hold strong spots to prevent Flipside from actually getting control here. Specifically, Mistu holding right on the plant spot itself. There's still that era of uncertainty on LDLC, though, as they have to split up their players, unfortunately. With Flipside, you know, the time the timer is still very high, so they can essentially go wherever they want to. But now it's been revealed, and Mistu, with a quick flick reaction there, is able to take down World Edit, unfortunately turns away, and that will allow Blade to trade. Now it's going to next mess in the 1v1, but no, Waylander will close it out, and that will put Flipside up to match point. What a round, and what a general, like, map from Waylander. He's absolutely been going off on this map. He's not on the top of the scoreboard. Actually, he is on the T side. He's on 19 frags to nine to 15 deaths, so he is on the top of the scoreboard for the T side. But his impact frags, the impact of his frags has been so monumental because he's the guy circling in around the CTs, getting the frags, making sure that the potent, like the um, the focus is on him and Glando's heart, apparently. Um, and, and that just allows the rest of his team to play around those frags and get that back patrol, get the bomb down and just win the rounds in the end. Waylander again just showing to how much impact he's had. He's had to have had three or four clutches in general in this game, yeah. closing out even just 1v1s. He's been almost flawless in being able to shut them down. LDLC just need to try and find him early on and close him out because it's, he's so instrumental to the, to the success of Flipside at this point. Uh, but if he stays alive, there's a very good chance they're going to be able to win the round, regardless of the odds stacked against them. And while we see Alex trying to push aggressively there outside of the garage, that's not going to play out. World at it with his op. He's found Tanu, taking him down. Existence, XMS, and Mistu. The last three, now just two alive as they lose XMS. Mistu tries to hold against the Heaven Push as he prepares for it. Nobody else actually moving in downstairs yet, so he's, this is still a safe position for the time being. But there's the shot that makes him, or the jump, I should say, that makes him fire off the shot. He'll have support coming in, but that's a bait as he loses his teammate. Nice double no scope though but he jumps into his own death and right out of the tournament as Flipside will shut it down and take this set two to nothing as they move forward into the grand finals what a great 2-0 for Flipside they are looking so solid and of course as a big favorite to going into the final and winning the whole event they are looking just like that and I have to say the two players that I'm 